Hello, Alan. Hello, Meth. How are you? I'm okay. I've had a day of it today. What's happened? With the new puppy and all. Um, going through a few things with Vivian, trying to teach her how to be in the car. And today, we took her in the car and she screams like we're tearing out her eyeballs when one of us leaves the car. <laughs> it's awful. And then she gets car sick, so she's spewed in the car. And then as Daniel went off to the shops, she had a wee in the car. Um, luckily, I just bought a, a car seat cover, but um, on the back seat, so it's all fine. It's in the wash now. Everything's good. But how do, how do people? I can't do it with a puppy. How do people parent children? <laughs> That's my question for you. I'm exhausted. It's um, oh, we well, we don't have a car, oh. so our child was never able to be sick, and we in the car. Um, <laughs> She did howl. She didn't like night. So if we were coming home from something in the pram and it got dark, she'd just start screaming. And so it, you just have the screaming child all the way home. But it could have been worse. I mean, but yeah, no, she, I don't think she's ever been sick or weed in anyone's car, to be honest. Well, she's not covered in fur as well, so I think you're, you're probably luckier there. <laughs> yeah. Not I yet. I mean, who knows what might happen during puberty. <laughs> How's your week been? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look, it's been, it's been fine. I have been wondering about how the bus trip to Eurovision went. You and Joel and a bus driver... What was the bus like? The bus was amazing. Okay, so we went to record the Eurovision special that replaces the actual Eurovision that never happened this year in Rotterdam. It got cancelled because of all the reasons that we're staying at home. So we had a replacement show where Australia got to still vote for the songs that they liked. Yeah. And the charts show, essentially. But we didn't know how we were going to get to Sydney. So because of social distancing and all of that, and there's literally maybe one flight, I think, a day from Sydney to Melbourne at the moment because of all the, the lockdown. And um, so we got a tour bus. Now, um, if you're familiar with tour buses, if you've ever seen a rock and roll tour bus, <laughs> it was awesome, Alan. I loved it. It was just Joel and I and oh, was it Gary the bus driver? Or Ter it was Gary or Terry? Can't Those are remember. good bus driver names. Bus driver names. Um, I feel very bad about that, but I can't remember because he was delightful. He pulls up in my street, which is quite a small street in suburban yeah. Melbourne. Huge. This bus, as he tells me, is one of the biggest you, you, you could get before they made them illegal. Like, that's how big it is. It's like a massive coach. It's got all the lights. It's got all the whatever. So we walk in. I walk into the front part of the bus. It's a full lounge room with a kitchen and a bathroom. And then you keep walking. There's, I think, six, nine bunk beds, like three, six, nine on each side. So it's huge sleeping quarters. And then right up the back, there's an extra lounge room for private conversations, I would imagine. <laughs> we had the best time. We had, had a little bit of champagne to start the journey. Good, we good. Had, yeah, we had some, then we just had some cheeses and some wines and some chatter. And, and then we slept that first night pretty much the entire way. Woke up and we were at SBS in Sydney. There you go. It was magical. Didn't have to catch a taxi. Didn't have to, none of it. And had a shower there, started, filmed all day. And then got on the bus, did the same thing and slept all the way. And then I was dropped off at my doorstep. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> you are so glamorous. I know. I don't know what the neighbours think. I have no idea. Like They must have just thought, what on earth is she up to now? Did it, have, did, it, did it have tinted windows? All tinted, all tinted. And just, it was schmicko. Like it was, it, was a, it was a bit 80s as well. I think it came out of the 80s. So it had, you know, had all the bells and whistles and all the, all the puffy vinyl furniture. And like, it was perfect. I loved it, Alan. I want to live like that forever on a bus. I, I suspect the people in your street think you are in some way hooked up with a drug cartel. 
oh my god that's a normal way for drug dealers to go unnoticed well yes around hidden and hidden in plain sight driving around in, in a just a huge tour van but the weird thing just a driver you and one other like they only would have seen you getting on yeah, so you're exactly. obviously you're obviously the head of the cartel because this is where you live <laughs> oh well um, I must be hiding a lot of things because I suspect by looking at my house, they're probably putting the two and two together and going, hang on a minute, mm. huge bus, drug cartel, that house. But yeah, but see, you wouldn't want to live in a big house to draw attention to yourself. But then again, you did draw a lot of attention to yourself. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it was so good. Seriously, Alan, I know you don't fly and you catch the train. Mm. Um, if you have to go to Sydney, like the overnight train or whatever, I've totally come around to this idea. It's genius. Yeah. What was I doing with all my life? It takes five hours to get from Melbourne to Sydney anyway, if you fly. Add another mm. five and get sleep in. It's great. And were the beds comfortable? Oh, sweet. You know, mm. the second night we probably had a few too many wines to not really remember if they were or not, but <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, it was divine. And did you have fun doing the show? Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. We had to pre-record it because of obviously social distancing reasons. We can't all be in the same room together at the same time and and all of that. But it was it was lovely. It was it was nice to get out. It was yep. because we haven't, you know, we haven't, haven't travelled anywhere for a long time, um, other than to a few couple of jobs. And it was nice to it's nice to be in a different space. That was the best thing. And we just sat on the floor of the bus with our little wine and our little cheeses and we're like, we're like pigs in shit, Alan. It was great. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Brilliant. I know, I know. And yeah. then dropped off at the door. Door. Oh, got my doona and my pillow and my little overnight bag and I just walked in and I went, I'm home. And that was like the best. And it's almost like it never happened. I can't remember much of it. It was all a bit of a whirlwind, but it was great. I and what did it. you wear? Uh, something very glamorous. Uh, it just, you know, sequin number that I'd actually purchased before I went away to Africa, South Africa, for I'm a Celebrity. I'd purchased my Eurovision outfits to get more organised for May. So I just, and I've tried on so many and I love them. They're all sequins with huge sleeves and stuff. Purchased them all and... Um, and it was a bit tainted, though, because in one of the challenges on I'm a Celebrity, Julia Morris, one of the hosts, was wearing that dress, the same dress, the same glitter sparkly dress, when I had to eat a bull's penis, Alan, and fish eyeballs. <laughs> so when I put this dress on for Eurovision, I was like, I was triggered of that horrible moment when I ate a bull's penis, because I remember Julia wearing the exact same dress. How's that for my life? I, I, I honestly don't know anyone like you. I don't know anyone like me right now either. It's been a, it's been a year, I can tell you. It really, like, there's so much about what you just said <laughs> amazes, bewilders and upsets me. <laughs> in so many ways that I suppose one of the things that concerns me a little bit is that mm. we live in an age where there is a television program where there is a woman wearing a sparkly dress while another woman <laughs> eats a cow cock. I know. I know. Now, and not and not attached to the cow. I think that's obviously the bull. That that I think needs to be said it was, right from the get go, because otherwise we've we've crossed into a whole nother oh, area. Totally, totally. It was cooked. I can't say it made it any better, but it was cooked. So, oh. 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 No. Well, look, it's a conversation starter. If it is. if nothing else, if so, if you're at a barbecue mm. and someone goes oh, there's nothing here for me, I'm a raw vegan. You could go, well, I've eaten a bull's cock. <laughs> and see where the conversation goes. Oh, I can't even think about it. I felt sick for weeks after that. Wasn't right, the fish eyeballs and the trout. Though the eel, the eel, the off eel. Oh, I like eel. Do you, but this was, um, 
rancid. But I've ne I've never eaten it in combination with a bull dick and, and fish, fish eye balls. Big balls, like big fish eye balls. Big fish eye balls. Fish You're sure they weren't bull's testicles and they just painted eyes on them? Oh, don't, don't, I don't. Like they gave you the whole like bull <laughs> meditate, like it's surf and turf, but like cock and balls. <laughs> the new surf and turf that was serving us <laughs> down to local. Don't want a palmer. I'd like the new surf and turf, thanks. I think they call it cock and balls. <laughs> yeah. It's a yes. It's in the same way that you open up the steak and put the oysters in it. You've yeah. just opened up the ball sack and stuck the dick in it, and it's cock and balls. Oh! And you have oh. it. You have it with bubble and squeak. Yes. I, uh, yeah. Um, oh, myth. I oh, know. What a year it's been. How's your week been, Alan? <laughs> Can we talk about you? <laughs> Can I uh, look? Uh, in contrast to your you know the period of time in, in which all these things have happened i haven't eaten the genitalia of no animals good um, i haven't been anywhere near julia morris uh yeah. and i haven't been triggered into remembering bullcock by putting on a sparkly dress so in some ways i'm unlucky but in other ways very lucky indeed mm -hmm. um no, look my week has been just the same as most weeks have been for the last little while. Yeah. I think I might have snapped. Um, I'll find out when the world starts to open up slightly and I get to interact with a few more people, I'll be able to gauge whether I have become as mad as I think I have been, <laughs> simply by the looks on people's faces. Like, I'll say a thing. Like, I already do this where I'll be in a group of people, particularly if I don't know them very well. Mm -hmm. And I want to sort of, I, I, I want to be part of it. Yeah. You know? I want to say something relevant and for them to go, oh yeah, he's really listening. But the problem is I've just, I'm a bit of a dick. Like, um, I'm not, I refuse to believe that. Well, but no, you, but, you lost your social skills, Alan. Well, yeah, but some, but the problem is I have a really weird idea of what social, like, I'm very social, but I'm not skilled at it. Like, you know, yeah. they yeah. talk about you need to do a thing for 10,000 hours to become an expert. Yeah. Well, that just doesn't apply to me because I've been social for way more than 10,000 hours and I'm still <laughs> not an expert at it. Like, here's a prime example. Yeah. I was at a children's birthday party uh, when my daughter was in uh, childcare and it was lots of people who I had never really spent any time with and we're in this like a bowls club or something you know that's where people have everything now oh yeah. we're going to have a 21st oh, we'll have it at the bowls club we're going to have a funeral oh let's have it at the bowls club we're going to eat bull dick let's do that at the, the um, bowls club bowls club multi-purpose venue Alan. exactly and the great thing is that all those events have one thing in common which is old guys staring at you like you shouldn't be there yes um, so uh, we we were at some sort of bowls club and inside they had this little machine and it had a it had a fan in it and it had this tube and it blew um, like butterflies up through the tube, little butterflies, and kids caught them using nets. So it was like about a meter or so tall, and these yeah. butterflies came up through this um, tube, this wiggly tube, like those guys out the front of um, car washers. Those guys. Tube arm, arm flailing tube men. Yeah. Love them. Love yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. They look like the crowd from Eurovision. Um, <laughs> Close. <laughs> and then and, they get tired and then they're up again. And then they get exactly. Yeah. And um, so this thing, and it played like the seven note melody over and over and over and over again. So I don't know these people and I'm sitting there and I'm looking for a conversational in. <laughs> and so my radar is, you know, my antennae are taking in everything they can. Um, and someone says, well, it's a bit like water torture, isn't it? And I go, oh, there's my opening. And I say, well, it's interesting you should talk about water torture. Now, a conversation that begins like that is never going to go well. 
No, that's when you want to, you want to hear the backing of the truck sound, that beep, beep, beep. You just want to back the fuck out of there when that conversation starts. Yeah. <laughs> there is no, like, if someone said it's funny you've been talking about water torture, like, if you're water torturing someone, that's not a good opening. If you're not water torturing someone, that's not a good opening. If you're at a bowls club with a whole lot of inner north parents in Melbourne, that's not a good opening. Many of whom I believe were GPs. And I said, it's funny you should bring up water torture because I went to a school that was named after a guy who was water tortured to death in the Philippines during the Second World War by the Japanese. Oh I said, God. and evidently, you don't, it does, it kills you by driving you insane. We read a whole thing about it. Then I realized there was no one left in the room. And it was just me in the machine with little butterflies flying out the top of it. And I walked out slightly bewildered and my partner came up to me and she said, what did you say? I said, what do you mean? She said, I just saw a whole bunch of people leave a room quickly that I knew you were in. What did you do? And I said, well, I was just talking about water torture. Just talking about water torture. Yeah, I said, I just, I, I had a good anecdote about water torture and I thought that was my way in. She just shook her head and walked off. Alan, you know that your friends love you and that when you give us anecdotes like that, we live for it. You know that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Miff, because yeah. um, interestingly, I haven't seen any of those people again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, so, the bowls club, were you allowed back? No, I don't think I was invited to any other parties that year. Um, you know, oh, I just, I, 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 I try too hard, Myth. I, I really don't think do. You do. I think you're wonderful, and you're a great conversationalist, and you give wonderful stories and anecdotes. And but I have been wondering about. Um, once this is all over, because lockdown is being eased to a certain extent, you can have five people over. Do you think, I, I, one thing, I, I feel, A, a bit uncomfortable about it because we've been locked down for so long, but also, do you think we'll know how to socialise? I feel like I've forgotten it a bit. I know how to do it on this now. I've got mm -hmm. that. But, like, actually socialising with people. Will I get tired? Will I, you know, will, it, will I want to... Check my emails while I'm doing it or watch MasterChef while I'm talking to someone. Like, <laughs> am I going to be able to, <laughs> like, socialise properly? Well, I think, I think one of the things, one of the problems that we're going to run into is we're going to have to wear pants. Oh, because yeah. I think on a lot of these Zoom calls, if you did, like, an anonymous poll, Hmm. I reckon almost everyone has done a call where they're not wearing appropriate attire from the waist down. I think you're right. And I think one of the things we're going to have to remember is I'm leaving the house to go to a park to visit a friend. Hmm. Put on pants. Put on pants that I haven't got food on them or haven't been worn for about two weeks and we're going to have to wash our hair. Yep, we are going to have to all see this, and it's so this that's even before getting out the door. Mm. So, w look, we're taking a very softly, softly approach in, in my household. We're going to meet another family at the park on Saturday. Yep, um, I'm going to take my laptop in case things get uncomfortable, then we can just zoom <laughs> each other from either end of the picnic table. That is perfect. Um, but I, that that's going to be a real litmus test. Hmm. Or, uh, like, I'm sure I'm going to bust out some sort of water torture style story. Um, but we, <laughs> you've been holding on to it for so long, it's just going to come out of you. Yeah. So I've just I've put a sign up on the f inside of the door yeah. with like a list of things that we need to check off before we leave the house to see other people that we haven't seen for yeah. seven or eight weeks. Yeah, pants uh, number one on the list. I would pants imagine. number one on the list, and then there's a whole bunch of other things. But now, this brings me to an important point. Mm. Last week, we were talking about makeup. Mm. And we decided that we were going to do a makeup tutorial. Yes. You came up with a great title. I did. Lips and assholes. How did we come up? I can't even remember how we came up with that. We were talking about sausages. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And you said it would be a great name for a beauty tutorial. 
Yeah. On so the, on the YouTubes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of the things, because I I'm feeling a bit dowdy. I'll be honest, Miff. Mm. Um, I can help you, Alan. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. I do need some help, and I wondered whether I want to feel I want to feel special mm. and pretty. Yeah. But also confident. Got, and confident. You want to enhance your natural features. That's what we want to do, first and foremost. It's Remember, you're always beautiful. You're always beautiful inside and outside, regardless of makeup. We're just enhancing your features, Alan, and making you feel special. How's that sound? Have I got a that's job? Exactly, that's exactly what I want. Very professional, yeah. It's coming this week. Lips and assholes. Subscribe. <laughs>